Let's talk about micromanagement. <laughs> I'm curious, how many here have been micromanaged before or think they have? <laughs> Great, it's a relevant topic then. <laughs> So why is this topic relevant for Kubernetes? In Kubernetes, uh, it's all about innovation. Leaders have a lot of power. We can inspire and we can devastate. We can build or we can destroy. For proper innovation, you need to be able to have speed, you need to be able to collaborate, and you need to have space for creativity. When there's micromanagement, speed is disabled because you need to check in with someone at every spot. Collaboration, there is no collaboration without trust. And creativity is lost, it's gone. So this is very uh, relevant. Let's try to shift the frustration into passion. Passion to innovate and create good software so we can make a better world. And you may think, is this a relevant topic? As you showed your hands, it was about 60% here that have been micromanaged before, and that actually matches the, the statistic. And 55% have claimed that it has gotten in the way of their productivity. And by the way, you don't need to be micromanaged only by your manager. You could be micromanaged by a teammate. You can be micromanaged by a partner or friend. Micromanagement not only destroys your passion at work, it can destroy your passion at home, which you can bring to work. So let's first focus on those that have been micromanaged. So what it looks like. I feel like his eyes are on me every single minute. There's nothing that I can do without him looking and watching if I'm doing the right thing. I'm told that I've gone a little bit too left, a little bit too right. Why am I not doing it as he has planned? I'm feeling like I can't make a decision. What if it's a wrong decision? I'll just get yelled at again, or I'll be told, why are you doing it like this? I was such a creative person. I, I had all of these ambitions, and for some reason, I can't even think anymore. I feel tired. I feel exhausted. It is such a pain to try to go to work anymore. I don't know what to do. I don't even know if this job is for me. I, 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 I had such great scores when I was in school, and I was doing such great projects, and I, I know that I can do this, but maybe I'm not worthy enough, maybe I'm not smart enough, maybe I'm not good enough. This is what it feels like. You feel trapped. Every move you make, it's the wrong move. You can't breathe. You feel there's no trust, trust in your abilities. You don't even feel like you have any abilities anymore. You're not valued. It doesn't matter what great things you've delivered in the past. You're treated as if you are incompetent, as if you have no skills at all. And it's so frustrating. I know that I'm capable. I just want to pull away, lock myself up in my room. Maybe if I focus, I silo myself away, I can get it right, I can get it what is expected, and I can prove that I belong here. But I'm so drained. I'm so drained that not only am I not looking forward to going to work on Monday, but already Friday, one hour afterwards, I'm dreading Monday morning. And what do I do? I avoid. I, when I see my micromanager coming in the room, I'm running out the other. I cannot take this anymore. 
And I feel like I'm so defensive. I'm not a defensive person. I, I, I always had confidence. But as soon as they say something, I find myself feeling the need to defend myself. I want to fight back. Should I fight back? What, what is my fighting going to do? I should just pull away and hide in my room. All creativity is lost. All passion is lost. I disconnect. I don't care anymore. I'll just do what you say. I think he's a narcissist. He must be a psychopath. But most likely, he's not. Statistics show that around 6% of the people in this room, most likely are narcissists. Maybe about 1% have psychopathic traits. So if you remember the statistic I said before, that 60% have been micromanaged, it means that most likely you were not micromanaged by a narcissist or psychopath. There's something else there. And what's great about that, it means you can do something. You just need the right tools. By the way, there's a disclaimer. The higher up you go into leadership, the likelihood that the person you're working with that has narcissistic traits is higher. So what can we do instead? You can create a courageous conversation. Now, you may think a courageous conversation is going in there fighting and bringing out your fist. Ugh! I'm going to say how it is. I'm going to tell you that you're a micromanager. No, <laughs> it's not the best way. But there is no place for compromise. You never should compromise on your values and what you need. Everyone needs something different. What I need may be different than what you need or what you need. And you need self-awareness to know this. It could be that this micromanager has great results with someone else, and they don't feel the same as you do, because that someone else may have different needs than you have. But it does not mean that there's not a place for you to have this conversation. Now, how does it start? The first step is to agree on intention. If you do not have the same intention, you might as well skip all of the other steps. So I even always suggest to start with the first step and maybe even wait today until you do the rest. Because if you cannot agree that you are here to work together, to collaborate and to move towards the same goal, then the rest of the conversation is useless. <coughs> so you come in the space and you say, I want to be able to work with you because I want great results for the customer. Can you agree on that, that we should have a great working relationship? And when they say yes, it's ready for the rest. The second part is about facts not about name-calling. You don't say, I see that you're a narcissist, or I see that you're a micro... No, no, no. It's not about name-calling. Name-calling does not work. If you remember, when you were being called useless or stupid or unable to make decisions, it made you defensive. So if you're going to be talking with someone that you want to work with and you call them names, they're going to get defensive too. So instead, you state the facts. I see that three to five times a day, you're checking in on my progress. He can't argue with that. Um, the reason he can't argue with that is it's a fact. Conversation continues. I feel. A lot of people misunderstand what it means, I feel. I feel is I, not, I feel your a micromanager, I feel that you don't care. I feel that you are doing this to me. That is not a feeling that I have. That is a judgment, and that is an assumption. 
most likely, this person does care. They just are struggling in their own processes. So I can't judge you. If I step into judgment, the person's going to get defensive, the wall's going to go up, and there's no place for moving forward. So instead, I need to get vulnerable. And that can be pretty tough. What feelings do I have? I talked about them before. I feel frustrated. I feel useless. I feel sad. Nobody can argue with your feelings. Your feelings are real. They may say, no, you don't feel that. And all you have to say is, you can't say how I feel, right? Those are mine. You need to be able to ask what you need. What do you need? Now, in my case, I know my values very well. A lot of people think values are passions or talents. For example, creativity. Creativity is not my value. I can survive in any space, even if there's no creativity there, because I bring it. It's a superpower I have. It's a talent I have. Values are what you need to thrive. If it's missing, you don't feel seen, you don't feel heard, you feel disrespected. OK, so my values. I need autonomy. I need trust. I need authenticity. I need empathy. If I'm in a space where these are missing, I can't function. And my values are going to be different than yours. You need to be very aware with what you need to be able to have this kind of conversation. So one of my values is autonomy. And in this situation, I don't have autonomy. I can't function. I need for you to be able to allow me to seek for the solution myself. And what I can give for you is maybe something that you need. Perhaps this person's value is quality. Or maybe being on time is one of their values. So I can give you <coughs> heads up three days in advance if I don't feel like I'm going to be able to deliver. Can we agree on that? That you're going to give me the space to think and solve, and I'm going to give you heads up if it's not going to be delivered? OK. So what I would like to see happen is that we empower and trust each other in our way of working together. You trust that I will deliver, and I will reach out to you in advance when we don't deliver. And this is the part where you listen, active listening. This person gave you their attention. What do they need? What are their values? You may have to lead up. You may have to teach this person how to get close to their feelings. When they start calling you a name, you may have to tell them, I want to know what you feel. And what do you need? Get them to have the right conversation with you. So I'm curious, who here has been the micromanager? Come on. I know I have in the past. Micromanager, what it looks like. You constantly have to check in. That takes up so much energy. You need to look at all the details. If you don't see all of the details, then maybe you miss something. Maybe something doesn't get done right. I have to do so much. I have to take over their job and their job because I'm the only one that knows what needs to be done. It's in my head. And I can't delegate because I'm so busy. I, I don't have time to delegate. And they keep complaining that I am micromanaging them. I just care about the quality. If we don't get this project done right, we will lose the, the contract, the customer, and our company could go down and they could lose their job. I care about them. Don't they see that? And everyone wants to leave my team. I don't understand. I have so much anxiety. I have so much stress. I need to succeed. I need to do well. And I carry this giant weight on my shoulders. 
I have so much responsibility. I am the only one that's accountable. Nobody else seems to take ownership. And they don't understand. They don't understand how it is to be in my shoes, to have all of that weight on the shoulders. If we don't succeed this project, then I will be fired. Maybe my kids aren't fed. Maybe I can't pay my mortgage. And this is so overwhelming. It is so much to handle. I need to also lock myself away. Otherwise, I can't get all of this work done. I wish they would just respect me and give me the authority that I need to have in order to control this project and where it's going. Otherwise, there's too much risk. What do I do? I oversee every detail, make sure it's done right. I intervene in tasks, because if I don't, maybe it's not going to be done in the way that I expect or on, or on the right plan. <clears throat> Can I even trust the team's judgment? I need to check all of their decisions and make sure they're the right decisions. And how can I delegate, like I said, when everything's in my head? My stress levels are so high. Do you know that stress is one of the biggest killers? My team is lazy, and they just don't care. So, when I am, as the micromanager, need to have the right conversation with my team, how do I do that? Maybe there is something happening. Maybe trust is not there. Without trust, there's no autonomy, and without autonomy, there's no trust. There are two pillars that weigh upon each other. I always like to use the BRAVING acronym. It helps me all the time, because trust is complicated. There's a lot of aspects about trust. You need to have boundaries, and you don't have boundaries if you haven't had a handshake on the expectations. If you have a team which is not acting with responsibility in taking things, it's hard to have trust. Or accountability. They make a mistake, and they don't own it. They don't try to make it better. Maybe they talk about secrets. You have a, a conversation with them, and they tell someone else. Integrity. They don't even know their values. They don't know what they need. How can they walk with integrity? How do I know who they are? How can I give them what they need? Judgment. They're judging me every day. They think I'm a micromanager. And generosity. This is so important. Most people are trying to do their best, including that micromanager. No judgment is so needed in order to trust that you are not judging and you have the generosity in thinking they are doing the best that they can. So let's try to find a way to work together. So again, what do we do? Same formula. But instead, I have a different need. Maybe mine is quality, maybe mine is being on time. It's important to know that these are my needs. It could be that this person that's in my team is perfectly fine with another manager. Maybe what they're doing is perfectly fine. I need to address that reliability is one of my values and what I need to be able to have reliability. If you can't make it to the meeting, do you mind letting me know a day beforehand? Because my schedule is always full. And it means that my time has not been used in a, in a good way. In the end, it's about leadership. True leadership is about guiding, not pushing. It's about a shared vision. It's not about my vision. It's about understanding, growth, unity, and service. We're in this together. Authentic leadership nurtures, and micromanagement destroys and hinders. So what can you do as a team member? You need to level up. 
you need to be able to differentiate yourself from those around you. Just because that person has an opinion of you does not mean that it's correct, and you don't necessarily have the same values as the person in the room. If you can't differentiate, it's very hard to go up. What is it about you that stands out? What is your mission? What are your values? If you don't know about this, you're not going to be able to have the right conversations. Once you know your values, integration can happen, and that's where courageous conversations start. And you may wonder, what does the leader need to do? It's exactly the same thing. It's dangerous to be a leader if you have not figured out your own values, if you don't know what your purpose is, and you don't know how to differentiate yourself and your life experience from those in your teams. Everyone has their own path, their own traumas, the things that they experienced in their life. Maybe it was divorced parents. Maybe it was a relationship that broke up, or something more severe. You can't expect everyone to know what you need until you know what you need, and you know how to ask for it. And don't assume that what you need is the same thing that everyone else needs, and this person knows how to act with you. Now I can't talk about. Micromanagement without mentioning toxic, because there are situations in where it's not healthy. So how do you recognize it? You know your values, you know your purpose. You've had the courageous conversations, but it seems like no matter how hard you try, it keeps coming back. It's an endless cycle. You feel drained every single time you go in the room. The per person doesn't even want to see your feelings. They don't care about your values. You feel like they don't respect you at all. There's conflict all the time, and in the end, you're burnt out and you're disengaged. When you're disengaged, there's something wrong, and you have a choice. You always have a choice. You can choose to stay the same. You can choose to change, or you can choose to leave. Stay the same? Okay. I'm okay with this person telling me what to do. I'm going to just pull into myself. I'm going to ignore my values. Maybe I don't know what they are. That's okay. I'll just keep moving forward. That's a choice, and when you make that choice, you've got to own it. And stop complaining. Next choice: to change. This one is hard, because everyone wants to change everyone else. You want to change the micromanager or the person you're working with. Come on, you can do better, right? You can only ever change yourself. You can start having better conversations, and in this case, it's not working. So perhaps in this situation, in the toxic one, your change is to fly above it, to soar above it. This person can micromanage, and I'm not going to let it affect me. I know my value. I know what I bring, and they can say what they want. I'm going to continue on my purpose and my mission, and I know I do good work. I'm not going to let it bring me down. But perhaps the bravest decision. The scariest decision is the most courageous one. It's to leave. It's a known fact that not everyone can thrive in every environment. It has to be a match. Your innate talents, your skills, your superpowers—they have to match with the needs of the environment. If they don't match, it's going to be a constant conflict. So maybe you're just in the wrong place. I bring creativity. Remember at the beginning, 
I bring it wherever I go. If I'm in a space that doesn't value creativity, if they think creativity is the anti thing, they want instead everything to be by process, they will never value me. And I will always feel uncomfortable, not seen and not heard. So I choose to fly somewhere else, somewhere that wants my creativity and what I bring. If you want to connect with me, there's two ways. The uh, Tony Drake community is a community of people which like to chat about leadership and things like this, and this is my LinkedIn profile. <laughs>